Ready? How's it going? My name is Brent. This is a 2023 Mercedes-Benz GLE 350. Let's go ahead and uh, install this paint protection film on the hood. We're gonna be bulking this one and it's gonna be using a four corner tack technique. And we did put a bit of extra soap into this. This actually has our window tinting uh, solution mix up or mixed up for the tack or the slip solution underneath here. Because of these ridges and things, uh, we wanna give ourselves a little bit more slip in this than normal. Otherwise, those are gonna tack real quick. All right, so we're gonna start by tacking all four corners. Put some tack solution in there, then we'll squeegee these, this out. You wanna make sure you're at least a good inch or so above the end of the hood there on the corner. As well as I did put a prop underneath the front of the hood to make sure that the hood is sitting a little bit proud of this uh, A pillar. We don't want this lower than this pillar that, you know, this just makes it a lot easier as far as the install goes. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is stretch from side to side a little bit. Go ahead and stretch down to the front now. All we're trying to do here is get rid of the fingers. All right, so we'll get some tack solution in there. And the way to make sure that this tacks down really good is to squeegee and then hold. I found that those spots where you stop and hold stayed stuck down really, really well. All right, and we'll get this last one down and then we'll start squeegeeing this out. All right. Now the first thing we want to do is get rid of the big air pockets. All right, it's a good idea if you're doing something like this to put a little bit of extra slip solution in there. Otherwise you want to hit these ridges right away. Because they will start to pre-tack. All right, we just gotta keep in mind that we already tacked those down, so when we're squeegeeing, we're squeegeeing away from those areas now. So what I'm gonna do now is put a, squeegee the front out, and then we'll take everything back that direction. Got some, uh, an air pocket was drying right there. Let's go ahead and we gotta get a little bit more slip solution back in that area.
All right. Let's go ahead and get back after it. Basically what happened is there was a little spot that was dry there, probably from when I was pushing the air pocket out, a little bit of uh, area had already stuck down. What happens with the air pocket is that the area that's not, have that doesn't have any uh, slip solution in there starts to dry. So if you go over it like that, you can pre-tack that part. That's why it's good to get rid of those po air pockets real quick. And when you're using this technique, you also want to make sure that you're keeping an eye for this moisture running down back here. See how it's pulled up right here? I don't know if you can see that. But you want to make sure that you're starting below that and then finishing to push it up and out. Because if you obviously, if the water pocket is here and you start here, you're going to leave a huge water pocket. The advantage to using this technique where you go from front to back is just that you're taking water back up the hood. So if there are any air pockets like this, you're actually putting new water into them so that they're not dry when you go across them with the squeegee. All right, there was a little piece of debris in there I had to get out. Oh, there it is again. Get the center section squeegee out and then we'll get over to the other side. So you can see how it starts to migrate down. Okay. All right, so now we will gently dry the hood off. important that you don't put really any pressure on the material at this point because in those areas that aren't fully tacked down yet you can have issues with um, moving the film just a little bit and that's going to leave like a I don't know what people call that um, but it'll leave little tiny distortions in the adhesive you'll see like a dot 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 um, if you move it I should do a video on that at some point show you exactly what stuff like that looks like and how you uh, don't get it or avoid getting it. All right, so what I'm gonna do now that that's white or dried out is go through and make sure that I'm not leaving any pockets of water in there or air. Okay, everything looks really good. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do is take care of these areas here that have some, a couple little fingers where I didn't completely get them glassed out. All 
So we sprayed a little tack solution underneath there and then a little slip solution. So the squeegee glides real well. We're gonna squeegee or swipe those out and then we'll do a swipe and hold on these edges. Make sure they don't pop up again. Got a little bit right here where it's not sticking down. Let's go ahead and check this side. This side looks good. I'll go ahead and go back over there, get that part down, and then we're gonna let this sit for just a little bit. There is a little bit of extra slip solution in this to try to eliminate the pre-tacking. We still did end up with a little bit of that and that's why we got those air pockets underneath there. We had to pull it back and put some extra slip in there. Okay, so what's left to do is, let's see, we're going to uh, trim the edges and we're gonna pre-wrap and then that's, this will sit and dry while it's open and I'll work on the fenders and then I'll come back and wrap all the edges and then heat seal those edges. Actually, let's take care of this guy here. All right, so on this here, we're gonna go ahead and cut, I'd say about a quarter inch away from the edge all the way around. Basically, I'm just cutting on top of the first ridge. I'm not going down to the second tier of this ridge here. All right. And then, let's see, I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna try using just the soapy water on this one, and then we'll add some tack solution if necessary. This is also something you don't wanna to do too early. You wanna make sure that this area is pretty well tacked. Um, but because we started, because we squeegeed this out here and then went back, this has been sitting for a bit. So I, you know, I'm fairly confident that once I cut this, it's not going to release any tension and uh, create any type of distortion in the adhesive around it. All right, so basically I held one spot in place and then I took my other finger and kind of went around to get most of the air and water out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and squeegee this down all the way around. You know, so it's important that you don't leave any water in this edge here on this first um, ridge. In that first recess, you don't wanna leave any water in that uh, because what's gonna happen is that's gonna dry and then leave an air pocket. And then that edge is going to be noticeable when you put the emblem back in. All right. All right, so we'll let this cure just a little bit more and then we'll go ahead and come back and trim it off. All right, so this sat for about 20 minutes. Let's go ahead and trim the edges off. Now, if you're, hmm, let's see. All right, I was just checking to make sure the camera was looking at something that we're doing. All right, so if you're newer to paint protection film, let's see if I can grab an angle of this. If it works, we'll put it in the video. If it doesn't, we won't. So something to know about paint protection film when it's curing is that you're gonna have light and dark areas. And then as it dries, you'll have a bunch of little, little circles of water. 
that will be underneath the material. Now, the areas that are still, you know, that still have some moisture in them that aren't dry yet are going to be, look a little bit milky, just a tiny bit milky. And then the other areas will just look darker. Like, so I don't know if you can see that right here, but this area is darker than, let's say, this area. And there's like a line right here. And that's normal. That'll completely dry out. So if you see that in your work while it's while it's drying, don't even worry about that at all. Okay, let's go ahead and trim this. And so what we're going to be doing here is leaving about, um, let's say about a quarter inch or a little bit less hanging over this edge. All right, let's go ahead and trim some of this so we can put a little tug on this material. It's nice and tight right here, so I was able just to kind of cut it without lifting this. Um, but let's go ahead and lift this because we're going to get down into some areas that they're not going to be so tight. And it's important that they're tight when you're trimming, otherwise you're going to have a real wavy or jagged edge. So what I'm going to do is put the knife in there on that edge and I'm going to pull um, backwards and a little bit away from the knife and then I'm going to use uh, my other my pointer finger here is what's actually going to be keeping me from getting wavy as well so I'm going to ride my finger on the edge of the hood The reason we gave this about 15 or 20 minutes to cure a little bit on the hood before we remove this tension is because I put a little bit of extra soap into the slip solution to try and help with the tacking, the pre-tacking that you're going to get on these ridges here. Um, and so what's going to happen with that is with a little bit of extra soap, if you relieve this tension or you know remove this tension too early, you pop this off these areas on the edge can shrink up and then you're going to have a stretch line right there. It's incredibly important that, that this dries uh, without the material, you know, bunching up or moving. Otherwise you're going to get marks in the adhesive. And the, the area that you'll find that that's going to be most or happen the most at least that's what I find is going to be these type of areas right here. Now, because we're able to tack so well to this A pillar and to the fender, it's not really an issue on this car, but a lot of them, you're not going to be able to tack to an A pillar so well, cause it's not going to be this present. So, um, you can end up with these edges trying to continue to lift up. Also, if the hood isn't sitting proud of the A pillar, then you can get those type of things in this area too, where it keeps popping up and popping up. And then you're going to end up with a little squiggly line here in the adhesive. So making sure that it's dry before we release the tension is important. And not fully dry, it just needs to be cured enough. And for this one, you know, the 15 or 20 minutes was more than enough.
So today, instead of using tack solution on the edges to give this the pre-wrap, I'm gonna go ahead and just use water. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and rinse these edges out. And then we'll go ahead and pre-wrap this. And actually, you know what? This isn't sticking real well. Let's try some alcohol and see what goes on, what happens there. So we're doing a little bit of tack solution here. And we'll see if this works any better. All right. So I went ahead and sprayed the edges down with some tack solution and then we'll go ahead and give this the pre-wrap. So today, <laughs> the it, you know I find that sometimes the water works better, just straight water, and then sometimes the tack solution works better as far as wrapping these edges and having them stay down. And without question, the rubbing alcohol is working better today. But that isn't always the case. So what all I'm doing, all I'm doing here is wrapping around, wrapping this material around to the bottom of the hood and then holding it for a few seconds. And I'm putting a lot of pressure with my thumbs on the bottom to make sure that this, you know, to help it stay stuck down. All right. Got a new battery in the GoPro. Go ahead and finish this off. The other thing that this helps with is that, you know, if you get an area with a lot of stretch, I don't have to worry about it popping up overnight because my finished edge is now gonna be on the bottom while it cures. Every once in a while, when you're doing, you know, when you're doing this, you can have an area come and pop up and then let's see here. So like one of these fingers, if it was had enough tension on it, it could actually come out like that. And it, when it completely dries out like that, it's going to the next morning have a line in the adhesive. And so this is another thing that kind of helps uh, protect against that. It's definitely important when you're doing this pre-wrap that you're not leaving any air pockets in there or water pockets. Otherwise they're gonna dry. I mean, it's just, just defeating the purpose of this. All right, so now that we got the whole hood pre-wrapped, we're gonna be done with this for today. I'm gonna go ahead and put this up. This can now cure overnight, and then I will finish wrapping these edges tomorrow. All right, so it's the next morning. Let's go ahead and wrap these edges, heat seal, heat seal them, and this will be all finished up. All right, so today I'm gonna do this at 690 degrees, and we're gonna go ahead and wrap these edges here. So I'm gonna put a little bit of heat on them. 
And then the first thing I'm gonna start wrapping is going to be the very corners. And so as I go across these, I'm putting some heat on it first, and then I'm going across and wrapping it just a little bit. And I would say probably it normally takes me, it takes me the first swipe going over the edge just a little bit under to make sure I'm all the way onto the bottom. And then I come back one more time and then I will go all the way under the third time. So it takes three swipes to get everything all the way down. And you can see majority of my edge is on the side, if not all the way underneath. And that's from the pre-wrap. All right, we're gonna have to flip, open that up and take care of that. My fingers slipped off and I, I tacked the material to itself there. And then, let's see. So when I'm going across the first time, I'm just wrapping and then the second time, and when I'm going across the third time, I'm gonna do it at an angle. My finger, you're gonna watch, and you can see that it's always at an angle. Even if I'm doing my thumb still, I'm turning my hand a bit and that will help the material wrap under. If I'm just doing this, it gives it more of a possibility of bunching up and then folding it over on itself. So when you go at a bit of an angle, it helps with that situation. And then also make sure that you put the cord behind your back over your shoulder and that'll keep it from smacking into the car. It's just a good practice to get into. So we've got that laid down all the way around. So what we're gonna do is lift the hood and we're gonna give it a final heat seal. Majority of what I'm gonna be working on now is gonna be these corners because we're gonna have some material bunched up under there. And I'm gonna use a technique. You could tell me whether you like it or agree with it, but I'm gonna use a technique called the, what I call the melt method, where you heat the film up real hot and then stick it to itself. I'll show you what that looks like. And actually, before we get to that, let's go ahead and take care of this spot right here. So I'm gonna go back a little ways, peel this material up. Just untack it from itself, and then we'll go ahead and reach Restick that down. All right, 
great. All right, let's change the camera position here. So as you can see, this corner already looks pretty good, <clears throat> but I am gonna put a little bit more heat on it. I think that was about a five count, and then I'm gonna push on it. That wasn't quite warm enough. Okay, that looks great. <clears throat> And that gives us a fantastic edge visible and it gives us a, something that looks pretty good underneath. All right, and then we'll give this one more final heat and really seal that edge to make sure it's not gonna pop back up. Actually, instead of a five count, I'd probably give that more of a seven count. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do these corners the same way all the way around, as well as give this one final heat seal underneath with the hood open. And this thing's gonna be finished and ready to go home other than I need to put the uh, Mercedes emblem back in. It just pops right in. It's got two holes to line it up and then it just pops right in. So we're gonna go ahead and finish this up here. Appreciate you taking a look. If you found anything helpful, uh, like and subscribe. We're gonna put out new videos every week. And thanks for taking a look.